Hey guys, um, Aaron here again with uh, yet another fountain pen video. And uh, today I am reviewing the Conklin All American. And you know, this is a modern pen that I'm reviewing. I'm not doing a vintage one. And, and really, that's what I was kind of wanting to talk about is that this is a modern pen with a, really a vintage name behind it. You know, Conklin being one and um, All American being another. And to me, before, you know, I get into the sp specifics of the pen, I, I feel like, you know, talking about just how and why this pen came to be and, and really focusing more on the history behind it initially, um, I think is important. Um, you know, I can cover all the parts of the pen and, and talk about all of that, but I feel like really talking about the history of the pen first is, uh, to me, really important. Um, you know, so... Conklin Pen Company, and I've got some notes here to make sure I'm not rambling on excessively, but Conklin Pen Company was actually um, originated in 1898 by Roy Conklin. And what made Conklin and set them apart from the other pen companies was his crescent filler. And most of you have probably seen that design. To me, it, it's, it's really cool. Um, and um, I don't personally own a crescent filler. It's a pen that it's on my list, um, but it's definitely one that I want to own one day. Um, a vintage model, preferably. Um, and it really was the first self-filling fountain pen. Um, this uh, allowed Conklin to control the pen market from uh, 1901 to about 1909. And that was until Walter Schaefer made his first significant impact or advance on Conklin's filling system. And he did this by producing the lever filler, which eliminated the bulk and complexity of the crescent filler itself. And, and really, Conklin's inability to, to change and evolve their product line, you know, they, they stuck with the crescent filler as their primary cash cow uh, well into the 1920s. And, and I think what made Conklin so innovative and, and made them really just one of really the best on the market to start off the century also was partially their demise. They, they didn't want to evolve and change um, their company and, and speak to what the American public wanted at the time. By the 1930s, um, the company had basically completely fallen behind their rivals, uh, Parker, Waterman, Schaefer, and Wall Eversharp. And um, again, most of this was due to them sticking with their original cash cow, not really developing other uh, notable models till really about 1923. And... Um, Obviously, we now have the dawn of the Great Depression starting. And, you know, when you combine all those things, it, it really was unfortunate, unfortunate for Conklin and um, kind of where now we're going to see pens like the All-American come into play. So moving forward to the dawn of the Great Depression, um, again, the company was severely struggling and uh, they were unable to keep up with the marketing demands the other four pen companies put on them. So they decided to start a budget line of pens. Now, now bear in mind, the other four companies had their own budget line of pens, but Conklin's aim with this was really to focus on uh, that budget market. You know, people that couldn't afford to purchase a Parker or a Schaefer or a Waterman. And, you know, something that I actually didn't know about the All-American pens so I did more research was that um, the pens were actually offered um, in, in a lot or kind of almost in bulk. So the first All-American pens were actually flat top and they were very plain. Um, their colors were amber, plain black, blue and green, and again, they were sold in lots of a dozen. These pins were a mix, mixture of full-size, short, 
and ring top pins. Unfortunately, by 1937, the All-American is essentially a downgraded version of the standard pin line. And, you know, I, I think um, I don't have, own a vintage All-American. Um, I am going to post in the uh, description um, some links to some pictures. I, 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 to me, you know, some of the pins are, are very, um, some of them are actually somewhat attractive, I think. Some of the materials that they use. Um, and I, I think that Conklin had a little bit too much too late, so to speak. You know, they came out with, uh, I think it was called the Nozak filler, filler, which was a sackless filling system. I think it was the first one and I, I could be wrong, but I think it was the first one produced by an American pin company. And, you know, unfortunately, again, it was just too little too late, um, and despite Conklin's efforts, by 1938, the company was sold to a Chicago syndicate and the pins that followed were much cheaper. Um, they were very basic and they really didn't match um, the design and innovation of the previous models. And so by 1955, the uh, company completely um, ceases production and um, really didn't see Conklin come back till about 45 years later. Um, in about 2000, the company uh, was reintroduced as a Conklin pin company. And then in 2009, as many of you know, Yaffa bought out the company. And I think it's done something really cool with the pin company. They basically reintroduced the vintage pin, such as the Duragraph, the Crescent Filler, the All-American, um, you know, and the list goes on and on. So. Just some brief history, you know, forgive me, I, I have notes and so I, I didn't want to again ramble on for, for days. There's so much more that goes into what made Conklin so amazing as a pin company, but also it, it helped in their demise. And in one of the links that I'll, I'll leave is some more in-depth history behind Conklin and it, it's a very good read. Um, so definitely check that out. But now getting on to the pin. Here it is. This pin is the Conklin Brownstone. And might I say, this pin is gorgeous. Video and pictures do not do this pin justice. And, you know, first and foremost, I want to talk about some things that concern me about the pen. And part of that was just watching other people's reviews and, and reading reviews online that um, the nib, people were not very satisfied with the quality control on Conklin nibs. And it, and it kind of turned me off a little bit and made me concerned because, I mean, these are, you know, really well-known reviewers that are saying, you know, the nib just doesn't, it doesn't perform or there's issues, there's hard starts, there's um, a lot of issues with the nib. So for me, paying roughly, you know, about $76 MSRP for this pen um, was a little bit concerning. So I made it my mission because I did, I like the fact, you know, this pen's girthy. I think the, the material that they use for this pen, the resin that they use for these pens is beautiful. But so I made it my mission to find one that I, I really liked and to find a deal. And that's what I did. And eBay is, is one of my friends um, when it comes to fountain pens. And um, I probably bid on 20 plus auctions. And I had a set dollar amount in mind, and um, I feel like I got a good deal on this pen. I won it. I won the auction at a price of thirty-one dollars, and I think I might have paid three bucks for shipping. It, it, yeah, three dollars for shipping, so a whopping thirty-four dollars. And you know, it kind of puts that price range into a Twisby Eco, and obviously. To me, Twisby Eco cannot compete with this material, but I did have issues with the nib. And, and we'll talk more about that in the writing sample, but 
I did have issues with the nib, which was frustrating. You know, I want to talk about the pen body real quick um, and kind of go over that before I, we go into the nib. But I like everything else about this pen. So as far as what I like, I like everything but the nib. So first and foremost, you know, you look at the uh, pen body and um, it's a girthy pen. There's nothing really special on this pen. There's there's no, you know, clip rings or anything like that. The uh, finial, just rounded finial. Um, I think it's a very understated pen. I think it's perfect. To me, it kind of goes along with the vintage line. Um, one of the coolest things is this rocker clip. To me, is really awesome. I love being able to utilize this when putting it into a pocket. You'll notice the cap does have a step down. And it's about one and three quarters turns to take this cap off. Um, once you take the cap off, it reveals that section and nib. There is a, a pretty decent size step down from the section going to the threads. And I hold the pen about right here. So right, you know, on those threads and I can feel the step down on the back of my fingers. For me, it's not uncomfortable though. I don't mind it. Um, the section is, is a little bit more narrow comparatively speaking to the rest of the pen. And I know that that's probably an aesthetic thing. To me, I, I would, I kind of like the section to be a little bit bigger, but I, I don't mind it. And I hold my pen usually higher up anyways. Now, to show the nib, make sure it's focusing. This is a, a stealthy nib, um, you know, just your basic Conklin nib. Um, I love the um, breather hole, kind of gives that vintage feel to it. And, you know, to go back to the nib, um, I haven't written with this pen in a few days, but the tines were, were misaligned when I got this pen. Um, and I have since got them to a good writing um, position, but there were issues with this nib. Uh, the tines were aligned. I, I, I still occasionally get some hard starts with this nib, especially if I haven't written with it for a few days. So definitely something to bear in mind. Um, here you can see the um, Conklin trademark. It also says uh, Toledo, Ohio, USA, and then All-American. And Ohio is, if you can see that, focus. Ohio is spelled correctly. Um, it's not misspelled. Um, if you can get this pen, you know, whether you like, this, this is the brownstone color, if I didn't mention. If you could get this pen in the 30 to $40 range, you gotta steal. Um, now, there are certified uh, sellers, Conklin dealers on eBay. I, that's actually who I got this from. Um, Yaffa has a, a really great return policy or warranty, I'm sorry. Um, so I could send this pin off and, and have them. I don't want to though, I, I just, I don't wanna wait on my pin coming back. You can also buy uh, additional nibs, which I'm probably gonna do anyways for, I've seen them around 20 to $25. I'm gonna keep looking though, uh, to try and get it as you know reasonable as possible. And I've got a medium nib on here, and which is fine. I mean, medium is fine to me, but I really kind of like to try and find like a, a fine nib, but maybe even a, a broad nib as well. Just just to play around and um, I'm still looking at some of the other other colors on these all-american models and even with the nib this is still a very very enjoyable pen and, and mainly because of how striking the pen is in person and just the material the resin that they use is is beautiful and you know you kind of see it kind of shine in that light um don't have a lot of sunlight today unfortunately otherwise i would open the blinds but 
again, it, it is a beautiful pen. So up next is the writing sample. Um, I've actually already played a little bit with this pen today to make sure it writes um, decently. Um, so I'll see you